Hey YouTube, it's Marita and welcome to another edition of the Nurse Lounge. And in this edition, we're gonna continue my series of my narcissistic marriage, my road to recovery, and today's topic is gaslighting. If you want to see what my narc did, I don't even call him mine, um, what the narc did when it comes to gaslighting me, stay tuned. <laughs> We are back. My name is Dr. Marita. The my name is Dr. Marita P, and I'm a registered nurse. However, in this series, we are not talking about nursing. We are talking about my narcissistic marriage and the issues that I've dealt with in time to dealing with the narc and how I am recovering from that. I am bringing you different topics each video and giving you explanations of what I have dealt with when it comes to dealing with the narc and that topic. So as a disclaimer, I am not a therapist. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a life coast coach. I'm not a therapist and I'm not a medical doctor. I am just someone who happens to be legally married still to a narcissist. And I want to try to give you the best explanations that I can of what I have endured over the past 17 years and how I am recovering and trying to move forward and healing from this process. Hopefully the videos like this, this video and other videos like this have been enlightening for you and you can maybe see yourself in me if that's what need be or maybe you are dealing with a narcissist who is um, your boss or a family member and you're wondering like, what is wrong with him or her? You may understand better after watching some of these videos. Even though the principles of a relationship in terms of marriage or, or boyfriend, girlfriend may not apply to a family member or apply to a boss situation or a coworker situation, the fundamental root of who a narcissist is remains the same. So in this video and videos like this, I'm going to talk about gaslighting today and what that basically means and how he has done this type of thing to me to make me think that I have something wrong with me. So. Without further ado, let's talk about gaslighting and how the narc did this to me. All right, so first when it comes to gaslighting, I wanna actually give you a definition of gaslighting of what it actually is before I actually get into detail. So according to the Oxford Dictionary, gaslighting is a um, verb that is to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. And that's exactly what it is they manipulate things to make you question your own sanity type of thing so here's some examples of how the narc gaslighted me and i really don't have any early early memories of being gaslighted but there are some key things that i remember that i'm like hmm i know i just saw something somewhere so here's an example there has been some times where um let's it was a it was some keys okay it was my keys my keys to um i have a safe okay i have a fireproof waterproof safe that i use to house our um, important documents and things like that so anyway the key to the safe could not be found but i knew i last left it i knew i last left it on my in my computer desk drawer and i knew it was there and I'm going through my computer desk drawer trying to find this key because that's where I kept it. And I kept it taped under uh, to the actual drawer itself, but under some papers. And I knew it was there because I placed it there. However, I go to search this drawer and it's not there. Now, mind you, I go to my safe probably once a month or whatever to um, either put documents in, verify documents. At one point I was keeping my boy's wallet in the safe because he was stealing money from the boys. Another video already done. You go to find that in the narcissism videos. But anyway, so I was in the safe pretty often to know where I kept the keys, my whole point. And one day I'm like, where's the key? Where, where's the key to the safe? And I'm saying this out loud, not really asking him a question. 
Um, it's kind of like I'm talking to myself type of thing. And he was just like, what key are you talking about? He said, I ain't seen no key. Now, mind you, that's why he guilty right there. Some he ain't seen no key because I wasn't really, I wasn't, I, I was in the, another room. I was talking to myself. And so I said, the key to the safe, where's the key to, oh, I have no idea where it is. So he proceeds to help me look for the key in that same drawer. Okay. He proceeds to help me look for the key. And we go through that drawer and it's, it's not there. It's clearly not there. Right. And, um, not where I left it anyway. It's not where I taped it, it down. So anyway, I said, well, maybe in my mind, I'm like, maybe I put it somewhere else. Maybe I put it in my, um, I have a little, um, coin purse that I actually use. I said, maybe I'll put it in my coin purse and I go look at my coin purse. So I go to another room because I had to keep my purse in my room because otherwise he would steal things out of there too. So I'll go to my room and then he comes back and says, I found it. I found it. You, it's been right here in front of you the entire time and you couldn't even find it. Now, mind you, he was just helping me look for it. So we go back to the exact same drawer and sure enough, it was taped down, but further in the back. So he had purposely moved it. What he did with it or where he put it, I don't know. And then put it there. And then it held like, okay, well, I know good and darn go well that that key was not there. But it will have you, have you. And then he's like, I told you, you didn't look for it. I told you it was in here. And I said, but you just helped me look for it. Well, you know, you're the one who's mainly looking for it. So we, we, we couldn't find it. You couldn't find it. Um, it's your fault you couldn't find it. You should remember where you left stuff. So again, that's making me think, well, maybe I did. Maybe I did put it or leave it somewhere. Um, maybe I did tape it all the way back here. Maybe, yeah, yeah, you remember you taped it back there because you were trying to make sure the kids didn't get into it. Because you remember the kids were get, trying to get to their wallets in the safe. Now, he, mind you, he knew the wallet were in the safe. Um, hence why when we went to go money out their wallets, why it was all missing because he had used that key. Again, they, they lie, they steal, they manipulate, they cheat, they everything. This is an example of what gaslighting is. He would purposely move things and then put them back and have me thinking that I did something with it and then make you feel like, okay, you know what? I am losing it. That's example number one. Number two, you remember, and I've mentioned this before, you remember when the iPads came out, the original iPads, when they were like this big, you know, those iPads. And I got me an iPad because of course I had to have, I'm always having like the latest gadget or whatever that's out. Or I take that back. I'm not that kind of person, but I did want that iPad. It, it seemed like it would be a great alternative to carrying around a lot, a laptop at that point in time. So I definitely, 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 um, definitely wanted, uh, that iPad. Well, as time goes on and the iPad was not the hottest thing anymore, they had started coming out with other series or other smaller ones or just different things like that. And I was reverting back to um, a regular laptop because I needed it to do papers and things like that. I couldn't do papers on the iPad. Anyway, it comes up missing. But because I'm not really using it, it really didn't dawn on me. He would wait until things were like kind of, not obsolete, but not something I was really into. And so it come up missing, right? And it came up missing for about um, four or five years. Matter of fact, it just showed up probably about a year and a half ago. So you know how long ago those came out. It showed up about a year and a half ago. I'm like, where has that been? I don't know. I just found it. I, I found He really stole it. Okay. He really stole it. And when I got it back, it was cracked. And he's like, yeah, I found this. And then next thing you know, I said, okay, we'll give it back. I want, I want it back. Okay, well, let me get something fixed on it first for you. And then, you know, I'll give it back to you. Next thing you know, um, maybe about a month or two later, I said, whatever happened to my iPad? He was just like, what iPad? He said, the last time I saw it, you had it. And I'm like, you had that iPad. Well, I have no idea it was. The last time I saw it was actually in this house. Well, that was true because you had it in the house. I feel like he actually went and pawned that iPad because it's gone now, okay? So that's kind of what they do when they gaslight. They will have you thinking that you're the one who crazy when you know you just saw something or you just did something or whatever it happens to be. And I'm kind of like, no, 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 player. Where is my stuff at? He would do stuff like that. He continuously would move things and have you thinking that you moved it. And literally, it is a mind game that they play. This is why I say do not throw that term narcissist around loosely because a lot of these people are crazy. They crazy for, for sure. 
and they are have narcissistic traits. We all have narcissistic traits, but we're not all narcissists, okay? Um, and as a disclaimer, also, he has not been diagnosed with NPD, which is narcissistic personality disorder. It is a personality disorder. It's not something we just use like we've been using it as a term we throw around. He actually, I believe, because I, I can't diagnose him, but I believe he actually has this, or, this disorder. He is a spawn of the devil, shall I say. These are evil, evil people and they manipulate you and they hurt you mainly um, mentally and emotionally and psychologically. People are like, well, why is it that you have all this education and you couldn't pick up on that? Well, first and foremost, this has nothing to do with what education level anybody is truly at. It's about the fact that we as either empaths or co people who are codependent want to help people. And we want to help people. I was seeing someone who basically pulled the wool over my eyes. He came into our lives helping us being a great provider and a great support person for the first five. Well, I won't say great, but a very good one for the first five years. After the first five years and we get married, things went downhill. Now, there were some red flags, which I have a video up on that as well, that I did ignore. However, for the most part, he did some pretty great things. All that changed after the fact. So again, this is not where like, okay, you know, he was, a, he was, a, he was cheating on you or he was a beating on you and he was doing this and you still married him. That's not what was happening to me. He, he's never touched me in terms of, you know, physically, because I would throw him into next week. So he knew not to touch me. Um, I, I don't play that. Um, but how he would get to me again was more of the mental, emotional, psychological aspect because he knew I wanted my boys to have a father that was around because I am no longer with the girl's father. And I know what kind of implications that had on my girls. So I did not want that for the boys and he knew that. So it was more of a mental thing for him. So, or a mental a form of abuse for me, shall I say. So he, he knew all that about me. He knew that about um, the situation. And they use, they are so manipulative. They are so good at gaslighting. And those are the two stories that I have. I have many more, but they basically play out the exact same way where he would have you thinking that you did something. And at the end of the day, it was him who was, he was like the puppet manipulating everything behind the scenes. Everything would come up missing and then everything would reappear. Matter of fact, with my phone, I had a phone, a cell phone. I usually, I usually always upgrade my phones and I, I pay my phone off, upgrade to a new phone and then keep my old phone as a backup, excuse me, as a backup, just in case something happens to the new phone because I don't put insurance on them. And if I find it funny, this is not really gaslighting, but I find it funny that he's going to call me and tell me that the person who did my daughter's hair stole the phone. Well, I never knew it was missing in the first place and you wasn't even home when she was there to do my daughter's hair. So how did she steal anything? So how are you, how are you lying on someone else? That's not gaslighting, but that is the lies and the manipulation that they tend to do. I didn't know my phone was missing. Come to find out he was taking parts from my phone and, and, and this is manip manipulation. He had decided to run a, a little business fixing people's phones, repairing people's phones. And he had to order parts to, or, to repair, repair their phones. Lord behold, I found out he was taking my old phone and repairing the parts for my own my old phone. So again, they that wasn't gaslighting, but I'm just an example of how manipulative they are and things like that. But yet he tells me that the person who's doing my daughter's hair stole the phone when at the time the phone wasn't even missing. So I thought. So, and if you know she stole the phone, you was here, he wasn't here. Why come you didn't stop the situation? Like things like that don't make sense. And they can't give you, they can't provide you an answer or rationale for any of that. That is the issue that you will have with your narcissist. They like to put things in certain situations and, and have you feel like um, you're the crazy one. That is the big takeaway from this video. They leave you feeling like you are the crazy one when you are the one who's like, okay, wait a minute. What, what, what happened? That's what the narcissist does. So thank you so much for watching this video. This video was on gaslighting and I gave you a couple of examples of what I have dealt with when it comes to gaslighting. Once you catch the narc in, in those kinds of acts, they begin to catch, realize that you're catching on to how they are and they try to get more manipulative and more um, creative in their ways to do these things to you. So I will say you have to keep an eye open. You have to stay about seven to 10, 10 moves ahead of them because otherwise they're going to continue to do the things they do to you. Um, 
I, I had to learn how to take pictures of things. I would take pictures to show him what he did or did not do. So, you know, when he says, oh, I did that, I did this, or it was right here. Uh-uh, here's a picture where I left it right here and the date and time it was left and it's gone now. What did you do with it? And you were the only one who was here. Oh, I think the kids did it. Um, no, the kids were not here at the time because this happened during the school day. And when I came home at two o'clock, the kids had not arrived and the kid, the item was here this morning, but it's not here now. The kids have not been here since then. You are the only one in the house at the time. Where is my item? Those types of things. And then he would lie. His, you know, he would lie so much. Oh, I have no, I don't know what you're talking about. He would lie so much. But the thing is, I start catching him in the act of trying to do these things. And again, they are like that. Stay away from a narcissist. You find one, you better run. If you're involved with one, I suggest you still figure out an exit strategy to get away from that narcissist. They will make your life miserable, miserable, miserable. I am at so much peace now. Yes, I'm alone. I don't really have here. No one helped me to keep my kids. I don't have any help to take care of my children. But you know what? There is so much peace in this house. The negative energy has been removed. Um, I don't even need no sage. Everything has been removed. That energy, the demonic spirit, I can feel it lifted. The cloud here, this, this house has been like kind of cleansed because he is removed. I'm so happy he's gone. Not legally gone, but he is gone out of this house. He thinks he he thinks I'm mad because he left me. I'm like, thank God you left. Glad you found someone else who's going to put up, who's going to unfortunately endure what you're about to put her through. She don't even know, bless her heart, what she's about to deal with. But you know what? Hopefully she'll get out of it before she gets too far involved with this person and realize what kind of person he is. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Follow me on IG if you want to know more about my nursing journey. Um, I will leave that somewhere on the screen or it be it's also going to be in the description box. Plus, you'll see it in the banner at the top. Thank you for following me on IG for the ones who already have. Thank the ones who have already subscribed to my channel. And please subscribe, like, comment, share if you have not already. Definitely, as usual, let's chat in the comments. Until the next time, bye-bye.